Hey everyone, so as many of you know, I've been rocking one of the best phones in the game right now, the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now I know that's very controversial to say, a lot of people would disagree with that statement. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and switch over from this to the Pixel 8 Pro. So many of you may have seen in my top apps, Google actually sent me this package, which I really appreciate. And that contains the Pixel 8 Pro. You know, let me just show you. So. Got a nice card from Google there. So we have the Pixel 8 Pro, Pixel Watch 2, as well as the new Buds Pro. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be switching over from the 15 Pro Max, my Apple Watch and my AirPods to the Google equivalent. And I'm gonna spend some time, maybe a couple weeks, maybe a month with just using this as my daily driver to see what it's like. So yeah, let's go and unbox it. Let's take a look. I'm actually really excited to check this out. Yeah, let's do it. So here it is, the Pixel 8 Pro, and this is the new bay blue color compared to the Pixel 7a blue, so there's quite a difference. In the box you get a USB-C OTG cable as well as a USB-C charging cable. Oofed, straight off the bat, I am really liking the way this looks. Just the color choice Google has made this year with this bay blue is stunning. This thing is so nice and premium to hold. You've got stainless steel right around the sides, completely shiny, feels really like, you know, like a piece of jewelry or something. It feels premium. But then on the back, you have this kind of matte frosted glass, which doesn't accumulate fingerprints as much as like a glossy back. So really nice, feels really premium. And obviously you have that new redesigned camera bar. So now they've just kind of made it a little bit wider. You know, the design is not completely changed from last year's 7 Pro. A lot of people, they bash smartphone companies because they don't alter the design too much. Just think about car manufacturers, Mercedes, BMW, Porsche, they all make the same type of car every single year, just with minor refinements to make it look a little bit better, to make the functionality a tad bit better. And that's what I feel like smartphones should do. So I really appreciate the fact that smartphone companies aren't altering the phones too much. It's pretty much what we're used to, but there's just those incremental changes, which I really like. So let's run through some of the specs inside of this device. So I've got them wrote down here. So we have the new Tensor G3, which is a four nanometer chip. So obviously it's not quite as powerful in terms of the best of the best, especially in the flagship world, but I'm excited to see how it stacks up in terms of like gaming, as well as just things that kind of push smartphones a little bit more in today's world, like video editing, exporting things, as well as transferring files, because I have heard there's slightly slower transfer speeds between internal storage through that USB-C port. So, you know, I'm gonna be comparing all these things to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And I also did a review and day in the life with the S23 Ultra. So, you know, I've had a lot of experience with that device and used that phone for a while. So I'll also be comparing that to this phone. So, you know, you're gonna get a mixed bag of uh, my impressions, but I'm gonna be brutally honest. So I'm gonna write down all the pros, all the cons, and fully go in depth in my review video. So if you wanna stick around for that, definitely do subscribe down below. So I just have the standard 128 gigabyte model. There's 12 gigabytes of RAM in here, so quite a bit more than the iPhone, but I feel like on Android you need it. It's not quite as efficient and as optimized. So far though, from just playing around, it feels buttery smooth. I did go ahead and bump up the resolution to maximum in the settings. And yeah, this phone is insane in terms of the screen quality. Super vibrant colors, you've got 2400 nits of peak brightness, which beats out pretty much any other smartphone. This thing looks stunning outside. And yeah, the clarity of the, the screen, everything about it, viewing angles are really nice. And something that I really like is now that you have a flat display. So last year you had this kind of curved edge design, which a lot of phones had in the past, but now companies are moving back over to flat screens. So it's nice to see that on the Pixel. I personally like flat screens. There's less glare. It's easier to put screen protectors on. And yeah, just overall, it just feels nicer to me to have like a more boxy phone. So uh, yeah, that's definitely a win for me so far. Now, considering there's no charger in the box with the Pixel 8 Pro, let's take a look at today's sponsor, which is Anchor.
So thank you to Anchor for sponsoring today's video. So if you are looking for a charger for the 8 Pro or really any smartphone you have, then it's Black Friday. So if you use the link down below, you'll get up to 60% discount on any Anchor products. So yeah, go check it out. But I think the most important thing about this phone is trying out the camera. So you have that 50 megapixel sensor, you've got the five times zoom, and uh, it's very comparable to the 15 Pro Max in terms of you know what it can do. Okay guys, so hands down, one of my favorite things so far is just the camera. Not really like the hardware, but I love the software. Inside of the camera app, you have this kind of action pan mode, so you can get these blurred shots of like vehicles going past, and it adds this cool motion blur effect. Um, but yeah, there's just loads of features, loads of options, even just like the astrophotography mode, it's just super cool. It does like a long exposure for like two or three minutes and you can capture some, some unbelievable shots of the stars. So I'll put all the clips on the screen of some of the best shots I've captured so far with the 8 Pro. And in terms of video quality, I'm gonna put clips as well. Video quality is really good. You've got super nice colors this year on the video. And overall, it's actually pretty crispy, but not over sharpened. It has that kind of natural look, which is great for me as a creator. Sometimes I want to edit my mobile clips, and so I don't want it to be over sharpened and over processed, but uh, this year the Pixel really did nail video. This right here is a quick video test on the Pixel 8 Pro with the wide angle camera. Right now I'm just on a boat going across Lake Windermere. Super beautiful day to do a camera test. Yeah, this is how it looks. So this right now is a front camera test on the Pixel 8 Pro. Pretty great dynamic range. Now, I'm a Mac user, right? So I often airdrop things from my iPhone. I often video reels and things, or maybe I'll film parts of my day in the life and then I'll airdrop them as well as like pictures so I can go ahead and put them in my video. Now, the worst part about having an Android is transferring files between Android and Mac. It's just super difficult. But there's an app out there called Warp Share. So you can download this. I'll put the link down below. It's made by someone on GitHub and that brings one-way airdrop transfer from the Pixel so you can airdrop to a Mac. You can't actually airdrop backwards from a Mac to the Pixel yet, but it's good enough just being able to transfer my files one way. That's pretty much all I need right now. So installing that was super convenient. If you have an Android and a Mac, go ahead and download Warp Share. You won't regret it. Now, I also am a bit of an iMessage user. I do message some friends on iMessage, but normally I do use like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, other social apps. I'm in Europe, so iMessage isn't like a crazy big thing, but it's still kind of big in the UK. So uh, I am gonna be installing AirMessage so I can link this up to my Mac, which basically creates like a little server and that forwards all the iMessages to the Pixel. So um, I will be doing that because I kind of do want to message certain people on iMessage. In terms of how I've got the Pixel set up right now, I am just using the stock launcher. I've pretty much got everything stock right now. I just wanna play around with it and see how it is with that stock Google experience. So uh, I will be keeping it stock for a couple of weeks, but I'm likely gonna switch over to Nova launcher because you guys know I love to customize my phone. So uh, there's so far not a lot of customization options that I've found within the Pixel launcher, the whole kind of experience is very determined by Google. It's kind of got like an Apple vibe that you can't really change much apart from like the grid layout and like select maybe the custom themed icons and change the color up here in the notification panel. There's not a lot you can do. They do have this new feature where you can hold down and actually change the lock screen. So similar to on the iPhone. So you can go ahead and change like the clock style and your colors and things like that, change your shortcuts. But uh, yeah, I just feel like no launcher is is for me in terms of Android. So, you know, I will be checking that out in a couple weeks. And also considering that now I'm using the Pixel, I, I can no longer use my Apple Watch. So I am switching over to the Pixel Watch 2. 
So I did have some experience with the Watch 1, I never did a video about it. My old roommate actually had the Pixel Watch 1, so I did get some time to see, you know, his use with it in terms of battery life. We compared it with my Apple Watch. So, you know, I do know there was a lot of battery drain. There was, you know, some glitching. The OS was overall a little bit sluggish. So I'm excited to try the Watch 2 and see if there's been any refinement. I have heard good things about the battery life, and so far it seems pretty good. Honestly, like, their functionality in here so far seems great. You actually have the ECG built in, similar to the Apple Watch. You've now got like four heart rate sensors, so it's now faster at measuring your heart rate. So every second it actually updates with the beats per minute, which is super cool. In the box, you also get a slightly different charger to last year, which is kind of unusual. So you have these four pins that need to line up now underneath. But overall, in terms of the watch, I think it's aesthetically beautiful. I love the watch face selection. I love having a round smartwatch kind of just very much feels like an Apple Watch, but circular. And to go along with this phone, I am using the new Buds Pro. I have played around with them a little bit and they're incredible. Like the sound quality is great. I only have the AirPods Pro 1 and I can tell you the Buds Pro are just another level. In terms of clarity, the bass, just the quality overall, it's so, so much better than on the AirPods. And something I really like is it's really great at knowing when someone's talking at you and then turning off the noise cancellation and turning on the transparency mode so you can actually engage with that person in a conversation. It's really great at doing that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll be covering the rest of this video in my review after I've played around with it for a couple of weeks. But yeah, officially switching over the SIM card to the Pixel 8 Pro. So I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.